We're going to visit a kind of place people love knowing can still exist in New York City. A repair shop solely devoted to clocks. And as you're about to see, one of the reasons for its longevity is that for many people, a clock is not merely a machine to tell time, but an intimate part of their lives. This is Sutton Clocks. It is comforting knowing a repair shop like Sutton Clocks prospers in New York City. For we live in a throwaway culture where new is often thought as better. But for many, a clock that has been in their home or business for years, maybe decades, is not something to merely replace on a whim, but to be repaired and looked after. I guess it all stems to like sentimentality where it reminds you of a piece of the, a part of your life and you want to keep that, you want to hang on to it. It's kind of like a photograph. It gives them something that's stable. A lot of times people will bring me clocks and I'll tell them it's like it's more to repair this piece than the clock is worth. You can go on eBay and probably buy a clock like this for, you know, $50 and maybe the price of the repair might be $250 and they'll go ahead and want to get it repaired. Located on the corner of Lexington and 61st Street, one can actually see Sebastian from the street perched at his work table, working hard on his timely patience. Inside his small shop are hundreds of clocks of every imaginable shape and design, taking up every inch of available space. Some are for sale, others are here just to get well. Sebastian's mechanical patients include barometers and clocks dating back to the 18th century. Turnaround time is usually two weeks, partly to allow the clocks a chance to lose time if they're still not feeling in tick-tock shape. Because sometimes you'll bring, have a clock and it will be working perfectly one place, but then you bring it back and then it's not working perfectly. So it's like sometimes these clocks just want to, I think, get out and see what's going on and get us sort of an oversight and hang out with some more clocks and then, you know, go back home and take a little, you know, uh, uh, clock camp or something. It's like sometimes there'll be a problem where even I at first can't figure out, but then, you know, I like to sort of contemplate and kind of think about it, have a sleep on it, and then come back the next day and then realize what's wrong with the clock and then do it. So it's like a very relaxing kind of a zen kind of where it's not like conveyor belt of just things that you have to do and put together. And for some, that two weeks turnover time can be an eternity. Customers sometimes call Sebastian nagging, wanting their clocks a bit earlier. He understands, though. They're so used to having that clock there that it makes them feel uncomfortable when it's not there. So you look over and they go, oh, the clock's not, not there. And you don't realize how much you look at that clock until it's not there. Sebastian will work on just about any kind of clock, from a pocket watch to an enormous bank clock. Sutton Clocks was started some 60 years ago by Sebastian's father, Nud Christensen, an immigrant from Denmark. As a youth, he was a rower for his country's 1936 Olympic rowing team. Still healthy and alert in his 90s, Nud stops in on occasion to check on things, often helping his son with the latest clock challenge. Sebastian says the learning process never ends, especially with the older clocks. Works of art within themselves. Every little town had their own clockmaker, and they would always try to do something a little different. And so when you open up some of these clocks, you'll just notice things that are a little different, and you sort of have to get your mind into the mindset of the clockmaker who was building it. Now with some of the older ones, 150 years old or older, do you ever marvel at what they were able to accomplish without the tools and technology we have. Well, it's just that when you look at those old clocks and those clockmakers, just to think that they were kind of sitting at some desk probably similar to this without all these modern conveniences that we have. So, and it's amazing that they were able to do the work that they did in such detail without computers, just mathematical equations. And you were telling me before that some of those clocks are actually much more precise than modern versions. Oh, sure, because these modern versions, they try to make them as inexpensively as possible, and they try to sort of cut corners, whereas 100 years ago, 200 years ago, 300 years ago, 
people really took pride in their clock. And like any good doctor with his patient, Sebastian can even use a stethoscope on a clock to figure out what's wrong. You can kind of hear the clock when it's working and you can sort of from there sometimes you can figure out what's what's making it stop by if you hear something that's not right like sometimes you hear metal on metal and or a sound that shouldn't be there and from that you can kind of figure out you know where your problems lie i just tend to like the the old school way of doing it, it, it it's very for me it's very sort of peaceful it's very just like you just one with the clock and one of the most important things Sebastian has learned is the true value of a clock is only determined by its owner. Some people will bring in, you know, like a really bad clock and be really enthusiastic about it. And they're super excited about it. That gets me excited and gets me wanting to work on it. Sutton Clocks is open regular business hours on weekdays. Now, if a house call is required for, say, like a grandfather clock, Sebastian can do many of the repairs on site.